Hey gang, in today's video, we're gonna get this microwave into that cabinet. I'm Paul with Studpack, and we're gonna show you how we do it. All right, here's the five things we're kind of up against on this microwave. Number one, electricity. Well, we already knew we were gonna put it here, so we roughed in a dedicated circuit right there, so we're gonna put a plug there. That's gonna be kind of easy. Second thing we gotta do, this rail is in our way. We wanna remove it without damaging the cabinet. Number three, we gotta put a shelf across here to support the weight of the microwave. And this thing needs ventilation, needs to breathe. So we gotta provide a way to get air in here and out the back some kind of way. And the final thing is, we're gonna try to save this narrow drawer right here and move it at the bottom. If you can just picture that, put the drawer down here, that'd be a perfect spot for like paper plates that you use in the microwave every day, and then to put the microwave up top. Not sure if that's gonna work, but we're gonna try the best we can to save that one little narrow drawer. I think the first thing we gotta do, get in here, let's take this drawer, get it out of our way, remove these drawer glides, and cut this rail. All right, gang, the next step is to remove this rail. We got everything else removed. So I went to the store and I bought a new pull saw. This thing's pretty cool right here. I actually have one, but the set on the teeth is all messed up. I wanted a new saw for this because we don't want to damage these cabinets like I was talking about. And to make sure we don't damage them, we're going to do a couple of things. We already know from previous experience that this paint tends to chip. So I'm going to put some blue tape across here and then I'm going to make a score mark with my knife for the saw to follow. Now we also know from previous experience that the joinery in this face frame is mortise and tenons. There are no metal connectors in this connection right here to worry about, so we can cut it with this wood saw. So let me put some tape on there and we'll score it. So I'm almost all the way through here, but I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna leave that little bit to help support this side of the rail while I cut this one. All right, that came out awesome. We're gonna hit it with a little sandpaper and I would not try a buzz saw on that. I don't have enough control with this thing, it's beautiful. Yeah, we love our buzz saw, but. Yeah. Not for finished carpentry. <laughs> All right, like I said, love the way that turned out. We're ready for this shelf, but I think before we put the shelf in, I wanna wire this up before we make ourselves a little cave here that I can't get into. Let me go get the electrical tools and we'll put that plug in there. All right, you guys, I'm putting in a single receptacle. It's a 20 amp. There it is, just like that. And it's going way back there. Now, here's the sink. I'm pretty close. For all you guys that have that NEC book on your bedside table and you read it before you go to bed at night, does that need to be ground fault protected? Well, if it does, we installed a brand new panel. So the easiest way to fix that is just put a ground fault breaker in the panel to protect that dedicated circuit. Easy. So let's put this in and then go on to the next step, which hopefully is gonna be installed on that shelf. All right, again, before I connect it to the box, I wanna check the plug on this microwave. It is a right angle plug and the ground is on the bottom here. So the cord will hang down like that. I wouldn't want it like that, but if the cord came oriented that way, you could just flip the plug over with the ground on top so your cords always hang down. Just a quick little tip. So let me get in there, attach that to the box, put the cover plate on and move on to our next step. All right, guys, we've got a receptacle installed in the box. And remember, we use adjustable depth boxes. If you're unfamiliar with those, check this out. There's a screw right here, Phillips head. Can you see how that box runs out? You can turn the drill around and run it back flush. If you've never used an adjustable depth box, they're available at the home centers and they will change your life. All right, guys, we've got the cover plate on. Looks fantastic. Our next step, 
we're going to drill some holes here and in the back to provide ventilation for the microwave. Now we want to do that now because if we put our shelf in first, we wouldn't be able to get our drill in here to drill the holes. So I've got the holes laid out and the way I did that was I've got two and a half inches from my toe kick down here to the front of this face frame. The face frame's three quarters of an inch thick, so I can use a one and three quarter inch diameter hole saw. We've got it in the drill, ready to go. I've already laid them out with my dial calipers, so they're perfect. Let's get them drilled. What are you doing with that drill, dude? It's all I got. It's either that or the, to the, the toy. The little porter cable? Yeah. All right, well, why don't you guys go ahead and like the video and consider subscribing so we can beat the algorithm and dad can get him some real drills. That's right. This one or this one, <laughs> nothing in between. <laughs> Alrighty gang, we have a total of 11 ventilation holes, six two inch holes here in the side. There's plenty of room behind the dishwasher and around the edges and the bottom for it to ventilate. And then we have five inch and three quarter holes here at the toe kick. That's all done, super satisfied with that too. So now let's go cut our shelf. The width of our shelf needs to be from the inside of this panel to the inside of this one. We already measured, it's 22 and a half. And we're just gonna make it 15 inches deep which is plenty for this microwave. There's no need to go all the way back. And if we did go all the way back, we would block all that ventilation we wanted open. So let's go set up our saw stop, cut the shelf, come inside and give it a test fit. Alrighty guys, we've got our shelf built. We put a little backstop on it so when you're operating the microwave, it doesn't get pushed back into the cabinet. And we simply establish this distance so that this seam right here where the door meets the cabinet is at the face frame. So that's ready to install. But then we need to know how high it was gonna be. So we measured the height of the microwave, accounted for the thickness of our shelves, and we cut these two spacers right here. We're simply gonna screw them to the cabinet sides like that, and the shelf will sit on top. It'll be super strong. And then we're not fighting that shelf, trying to get it level and all that. So let's screw these on, put our shelf on there and give this microwave a test drive. All right, now check out how easy this is to put this shelf in. Just like that. So we have these little angle clips that actually came with the cabinets. We have a bunch left over. We're gonna use those to secure the shelf to the cabinet. So when we push our microwave in, that shelf doesn't take off off the backside. Alrighty gang, this thing's not going anywhere. Let's slide that microwave in there and see how it fits. Cool. Nice, man. Check it out. Soft close even. All right, that looks fantastic. I love it right here next to the dishwasher. It's gonna be super cool, super for them to operate. But you know what guys, I forgot. We don't have power there yet. So when we did the rough electric, we weren't sure if the microwave was gonna go here or over there. So we actually ran circuits down both walls and they're tied together in a junction box in the attic. So I gotta go up there, hook the feed from the breaker to this receptacle behind here. We're gonna abandon that one. We'll wire nut it, make it safe, get power to this microwave. And I think we need to make some popcorn, dude. What do you think? Let's do it. All right, but first I gotta go in that attic. All right, but good luck. It's quick, three wire nuts and I'm done. Good. All right. It's hot in that attic. All right, we had to go up there, connect that circuit, 
it was off at the circuit panel, but now it's on. As you can see our little tester back there, we're good to go. I'm gonna get in there, pull this out, plug our microwave in, see if that thing works. Heat up some lunch. There we go, I'm starving. What was that? <laughs> it was the microwave. <laughs> Subscribe to Stud Pack. There you go. <laughs> All right, I put the drawer back down here, so now you can really see how this is gonna look. And remember I said at the beginning of the video, I would love to put another drawer right here. But you can see that's pretty narrow right there. But check out that face frame. Look how much of it gets covered by the drawer front over here. I could remove an inch of that face frame. It would still be plenty wide enough and strong enough, and I would gain an inch of depth in the drawer. But before we do that, we're gonna take the original drawer front that was on the top drawer, rip it down so it fits right here and we're just going to check it out see how it looks yes these rails are going to be pretty narrow but we can't use this drawer front for anything else so we're just going to rip it bring it in here see how it looks if we run it no harm no foul so let's go out to the saw stop and cut this thing down Let's see how this looks. I actually think it's gonna be okay. Hey. That's not terrible. I like that. I think that looks awesome. Yep. Custom feel, custom look, mm -hmm. everything about it. Yep, and that's gonna be a sweet little, kind of a secret drawer almost, huh? They're gonna be like the drawer into the microwave. I don't see it. No, the other drawer. What other drawer? <laughs> Our next step is to cut this face frame, but we want it to be as perfect as we can make it, so we're gonna make a jig. So let's head out to the saw and make a jig real fast. there's our jig super simple to make a jig like that on a table saw let me show you how it's going to work we're simply going to clamp it to the face frames of the cabinet just like that a clamp here and a clamp here our router is going to ride on here our bearing on the bit is going to ride on plywood and remove whatever part of the face frame is showing let's clamp this in place and i think we're about ready you know what i might need your help with these clamps buddy and this template i can't hold everything at once all right i got Are you, you. okay Getting close to getting this finished, guys. We got the rail done. We got it narrow the way we want it. We basically lowered the drawer guide by one inch in the front. So we also have to lower the back an inch. And this is what supports the back of the drawer glide. Just goes into that tab right there. We have adjustment horizontally, but none vertically. So see these two holes back here? That's where these two engage and the whole thing gets screwed on. So all we have to do all we got to do is lower these holes by an inch. Now this mark is this hole lowered by an inch, but if I lower this one by an inch, we're going to run into that hole. So we're basically just going to use this one and the two screws and cut that one off. And that'll be plenty strong enough for this little drawer. So I've got a 21 64 drill bit. I'm going to drill those two holes and we'll get these things mounted. Should be it all right check it out that's cool 
But remember the drawer now is too tall. It's going to hit our shelf. So we're going to measure to the support right here for the shelf and take a measurement. I'm like an inch, bud. Okay. Which makes sense. You want to take an inch and a quarter off that drawer? Yeah, let's do all it. Right, let's take this out to the saw and we're going to trim an inch and a quarter all the way around. Come back and try it. Take it inside and see how she fits. That fits great, look at that. All right, and I can see our shelf is gonna be just above it. Why don't we grab it, put it on there, and check it out. All right, let's push this thing in here. Boom, it hit that stop, perfect. We have that nice reveal all the way around. Here's the old drawer front we cut off. Let me put it up there for you so you get the full effect. I'm loving that. I love the way this reveal right here is the same as this reveal, and that even hides the feet on the microwave. So when our handles come in, we're just gonna drill two holes right here, through the drawer front, through the drawer box, attach that handle. It's gonna pull everything together, and then we're gonna get inside the drawer front and attach it to the drawer box with two more screws. So that's gonna be perfect. We have some color match paint already. We'll give this a light sanding, paint that. Any edges around here we may need to paint. And remember, we got all that ventilation under here and on the side here by the dishwasher. So that thing's gonna have plenty of air for cooling. It's gonna be awesome. So we're so excited about how this came out. Again, just like we envisioned it. And you know what, Jordan and I were looking at your like buttons. We think there's room underneath it for a secret drawer just like this. Now you know what to do. And you may need a shelf above that to support the like button. But we hope you guys picked up some tips and tricks in this video on how to customize cabinets. Drop us a comment. Ask us a question, subscribe if you haven't already, and we'll see you on the next one.